Today we are making rattling snipers in camo cloaks for the Imperial Guard, also known as the Astra Militarum. Let's start by making the weapons for the rattlings. I'll mainly use rifles from Adeptus Mechanicus, but I'll also show you how to make some from scratch if you don't have any suitable spare parts lying around. I start by cleaning up the weapons, removing mold lines and bits of screw, and I'll also cut off the arm because we won't need it. Now the simplest way to make a rifle is just to take a piece of tube, like this plastic tube from a q-tip where I've cut off the ends, but really anything will do. One way to improve on this is to get your hands on some styrene rods and tubes. Here I have a thin rod and a thick tube. I'll make some sort of barrel that looks like it has a silencer on it. I'll make the silencer by scoring a line around the tube and then we can just snap it off. And we'll just clean that up. The cool thing is that the rod will fit inside the tube and we just have to cut off a length that we like. I'll use plastic glue to glue them together. To build the bodies we're gonna use DAS modeling clay, which is an air drying clay that will dry without us having to do anything, so we can simply shape our minis and let them dry, and that's it. We're gonna place them on 25mm bases from Games Workshop that I have lying around. I'm not entirely sure how tall they should be, but I want them to be roughly half the height of a space marine, so we're gonna take a lump about this big and shape it into something vaguely resembling a torso. Then we're gonna use the rest to make a head and an arm. I'm trying to make it look like his head is leaning forwards and a little on the side, so it'll rest on the rifle when I add that. The trick to working with DAS clay is to keep it wet, so I'll just wet my finger here and we can shape this guy how we like. Now we're gonna take a rifle and we're just gonna stick it into the clay so it looks like he's aiming down the scope. We don't have to be precise here, we're just looking to make the rough shape of a body because all of this will be hidden later on. We want to make sure that the rifle is aligned with the ground as best as possible. Alright, that took almost no time at all. We'll do another one with the sniper gun that we made from styrene rods. And of course, they don't all have to be the same size. Miniatures tend to be that because they're mass produced, but really I find it's kinda cool to have different sizes, because you know, people aren't all the same size obviously. The rifle seems a bit too long, so we're just gonna shorten it a bit, like this much. I'm not actually entirely sure that we even need to place the extra arm, because in the end they won't be visible. We just need to make a lump that the camo cloaks will cover. And of course we'll also make one with the rifle that's just a tube. I wonder if we can make one that's lying down, that'd be interesting. Maybe do something that vaguely resembles legs. I'm an artist! Okay, now we got these halflings done, I think it's time to let them dry. The clay felt a little bit dry to me when I was making the model, so I'm gonna go over them with some glue to make sure they don't fall apart. If you make sure to add water so the clay feels wet when you're making them, it shouldn't be a problem. I'll just chug on some super glue and it should be fine. You could also use PVA glue here. And here's a little tip for you, if you overdo it with the super glue, you can soak it up with the edge of a paper towel without it getting stuck to the model. Like we did in the video about tarps and camo netting, I'm gonna mix up some paint and then we're gonna dip our camo netting in it. I mix up some chief craft paints, starting with a couple of green colors. I'll add some glue to help it stick. Then I add some brown to tone it down and that'll be fine. I'll also add some water and a drop of washing up liquid to make it easier for the paint to soak into the cloth we'll be using. We can always paint over it later, but we have an opportunity to save some time by essentially finishing the modeling and establishing a base coat in one step. To make the camo cloaks, I'll use gauze, because it has this nice irregular pattern that'll work really well with what we're trying to achieve here. You can pull at it to make it even more random looking. You could also use cheesecloth, which is probably a lot cheaper, but I had the gauze lying around and I like it a little bit better than the cheesecloth. Now I'll cut a bunch of little squares for the camo cloaks. We'll put aside the narrow strips we have left over. I have a plan for those. Let's cover these hobbits up. We submerged the camo cloak in the green paint until it's soaked through. Then we wring out most of the paint so we don't drown our halfling friends. 
and then we wrap it around the model with an opening around the rifle so the barrel is sticking out but everything else is hidden. I try to make sure that the camo cloak doesn't hang over the edge of the base. While we're at it we might as well paint the barrels black and then we just have to leave them to dry. So next up we're gonna make some camouflage for the barrels of the guns. So I'm gonna take a couple of strands of this gauze and I'll wrap it around the gun barrels. We just want about this much, three or four strands wide and that should be enough. Okay, so I'll make a bunch of these before we move on, because once we begin we'll be covered in paint. We do the same thing as before and wring out most of the paint. Then it's just a matter of wrapping it around the barrel and we leave it to dry. Okay, so the base coat is dry and things are looking good. To add some depth to the paint scheme, let's give it a coat of Acrax Earthshade. Just take a big old brush and slap the wash all over the model. After the wash has dried, it's quite dark, so I'll give it a dry brush with the base color from earlier. And then I'll go over the models again with a dry brush of a light green color. These guys can't just sit out in the open, so let's add some flock to the bases. I tried using static grass on a couple of them, and after a few layers, they look decent. Let's see what happens if we try to make a ghillie suit by covering one completely in static grass. <laughs> yep, perfect camouflage. Next up I'm gonna try to apply some knock leaves to one of the rattling snipers. This is something I wanted to try for a while. I'll take some diluted PVA and just apply it all over the camo cloak. We don't want to pile on the glue so thickly that it'll form a visible shell. We just want enough that the leaves will stick by themselves. I'm using a sieve to avoid clumps and spread the leaves fairly evenly. Okay, this looks pretty good so far. Let's add some flux to the bases that didn't get static grass. Let's take a look at the final results. My favorite is the guy with the leaves, so I'll probably add those to the rest of the models. I want to thank my patrons who helped these videos happen. If you want to see your name on this list, get behind the scenes content and help support the channel, head on over to Patreon.